So here's uh, we're going to move on to question two. This one is from Wobazark. And they are asking, what are the best shoes for the trail, if possible, for shifting workload off the calves? I know that the stock answer would be higher drop shoes, but they're wondering if rockers, plates, and foam that have been introduced in recent years has changed the equation. So, David, do you want to start with this one? Sure. I mean, there's a couple of things you could look at when you break this question down. It starts off with like unloading the calves, right? Like, okay, so how do we unload the calves? And there's a couple ways you can do that. And they don't, so much of it's independent, like where it's the individual's own biomechanics and how they interact with the shoe. But when I think of trails, I'm also thinking of terrain, how we're navigating them. Here, we have a lot of steep trails. And I think of a lot of vertical gain and drop and things like that. And you're going to be using those calves a lot anyways. But, um, or situations where you might have to power hike or things like that, et cetera. But usually you take a look at some of these new foams that are coming out. They can kind of help with some of that force attenuation, give you a little bit more rebound. I think of uh, potentially a more rocker design, a little bit sharper toe spring up front, take some load off the calves, shift it a little bit higher up the chain. Um, something a little bit stiffer just in general. So usually this is something that is plated and rockered and toe spring, you know? Um, the first one that comes to mind for me would be like something like a Saucony Endorphin Edge, something along those lines, you know, obviously that may or may not work for the individual, but, um, basic philosophies. I look at something that's a little less, let's say flexible, flat geometry, something you're going to have to really lever from off of the great toe, the planner flexors, make sure you have all that range of motion. You're able to, to push off. I'm so used to saying lever from, and I realize a lot of people don't know what I mean when I'm saying <laughs> that, but, um, the, the less you have to physically push off of, you know, that forefoot, the less you're in theory going to ha- be using those calves. Um, it's hard though with trail situations specifically though, because they are so variable, right? Like regardless of the shoe, I find myself using my calves quite a bit. And so, uh, and that's also biased. We have a lot of front country trails that climb a couple thousand feet in five, six miles, you know, like that's, we have a lot of steep trails. Right. Um, but I mean, just the basic principles still apply from what I said before. I think the base of a lot of that came from a study that was done, I think in 2015, 2016 by Saiban. I hope I, Shaban. Yep. Oh, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, but what they did is they they didn't use shoes that were on the market. They created shoes. Um, and what they did is they had the same longitudinal bending, bending stiffness, and then they would give it, or and then they would give it different rockers at different points along the base of the shoe, and so and they'd give it different angles, and then again different stiffnesses. And what they found was that shoes with a certain amount of stiffness, where you can't bend it a lot, with a rocker that starts at a certain point and has a certain angle decrease increases the amount of load on the calf. That's because it's taking over for the, what we call the four foot rocker. And so that's what you can look for in a shoe. And so you said endorphin edge is one, another series of shoes in my head was the North face vective series. I know that they have a stiffer mm. plate design going through theirs. Um, and I've ran in the, I would say the Tecton Etch X from, from Hoka as well, but it is a little bit flexible, which I love. <laughs> but so I don't know if that one would offload the calf as much, but yes, I think that in terms of their original question, are there more things in the equation now than just high drop? I think there's totally. definitely, yes, you know, and I think that rocker and how, how stiff it is, is the main factor But in trail situations, it depends on the type of trail, like you said, David. Um, And it's one of those where, like, if you are running uphill, you're going to use your calves all the time anyway. (laughs) Actually, just to keep this in mind, don't find a shoe that gets rid of your calf demand because that's not going to happen. The calf does the most of any muscle in our body for running. So you got to have strong calves regardless. And I know that's not what this person is saying, that they don't want to use their calves. Um, But just know that calves are super important. And, um, yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to add, Matt. I want to hear kind of from you, some recommendations that you have any other considerations that we haven't mentioned, um, in other specific shoes. Yeah. So to, to jump back and kind of bring everything together, I, I agree with both of you. I think it, it, as always, the answer is depends that a lot of these new factors, if utilized correctly, can be beneficial. I think for trail, you get into, when you talk about foams, you get into a little bit of challenge because softer shoes 
plus softer surface, you're going to actually get more calf work because you're going to have to work on stabilizing. So instead of just being a propulsive muscle, all of a sudden the calves get engaged because they're also postural muscles for standing and in some degree for any kind of locomotion. Now you're going to ask them to do more. So softer shoes, I would be careful with. They're going to do the opposite. The same thing with plates. If the plate lines up with your first metatarsal, which you're, you're not going to know how to do that. It's just kind of, does it roll? Does it feel good? Does it roll nicely? If it does that, then yes. And there's, you've got this nice forefoot rocker. That is going to be really good. If the plate does not, and that rocker does not line up with your foot, you are going to increase the demand on your calf because you're trying to push off a, an overly stiff surface. So the plate that needs to be curved and the forefoot rocker needs to line up with your mechanics. Um, a shoe and obviously the high drop typically will reduce some calf activity. I think the better way that we need to think about this is it reduces the range of motion required at the calf. So you don't have to go as low. So in some people that'll reduce the load, right? Cause if you aren't at that end range of motion, you, like, there's not as much stress on the tendon or the calf. You stay in a little bit more mid range. Your muscles work much better in the middle than either of the extremes. Um, you just have to be careful. You're not immune because you're still, if you work into that very short range, you can still have some issues. So again, yes, you can do it with some of the new things. And I, I think high drop, a good forefoot rocker and a plate that support, not supports, but works and keeps all those things working together well is yeah. what would be really good. And the shoe that comes to mind is the Kraft Ultra Carbon. Am I saying that oh, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good I? one. CTM Ultra yeah, Carbon. Yeah, CTM too. Ultra uh, Ultra Carbon is the kind of the one. I'm that, actually impressed. I was able to rattle that off. Yeah, <laughs> see, that was good. That's, so a lot, that's, that's a lot of letters and words. That's the shoe that came to mind immediately. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but it's got everything that was mentioned where it has a higher drop. It's inherently stable because it's so stiff. Um, from that plate that curves really nicely. It's got a really, really, really Ooh, good that's transition. That's an EVA foam, though, isn't it? I, that's why I like it in terms of being a little yeah, bit more yeah. stable because no, it's not soft, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, yeah. in terms of reducing workload in the way that's being asked, that is kind of what came to my mind. That's a good one to add. I, I that one I haven't thought about in a while. <laughs> um, I think the other perhaps the, other piece, the update. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it would be fun to test it. I think something interesting. Uh, to think about too, is you talked about the softness of foams. We've talked about drop and we mm. talk about this all the time. And we just had a post on high and low drop, even on our media channels and what that does yep. for different workload, but drop is measured statically. It's not measured right. dynamically. So that basically that means there's the drop that you read from our reviews or the drop that you read on websites is all based on measurements that are done without any weight through the shoe. When you start running, that changes what the actual drop of the shoe is. If you have a really soft and compliant heel, your your drop is really lower than what it's listed because you're just compressing into that foam. So in that way, how soft your heel um foam is and how that interacts with the rest of the shoe can really have an impact on the the loading through the calf because matt was talking about how higher drops bring your ankle through less range of motion that's only true if it doesn't compress all the way down to like a negative drop shoe which can happen so um i think that's just the other consideration to put in there but i like that so the shoes that we had listed david you had said what was the uh, other the endorphin edge Edge. we got the vective series matt mentions this ctm ultra carbon um too so there's some good shoes in there for you in that realm to try out i I really want to try that new uh, it's i know we just talked about it depends but that new special foam i can't remember what it's called shoe from north face that they had their like first true like plated trail racer i mean they had another one but now this one actually has a new foam and i'm really i can't remember what it's called but i really want to try that i don't even know what you're talking about that's cool i'll go look it up hold on yeah i know you'll find it